we're locked in. We're going to let the intro music fade out as I press this button. And now it's just pure bliss. We are <laughs> one, two, three, four, five of us right now. We don't know if any more are coming because people people, well, I, I invite right. people throughout the, the week and then I completely forget who's coming. Like, <laughs> One of our guests today was walking in, and I had no idea who... Like, I, I really didn't know who he was. <laughs> like, who's this? I'm like, what are you here for? Like, uh, the podcast? All right, great. Open House Sunday. Open House Sunday. We have uh, Kate's Chicken Pot Pie. She made a chicken pot pie. We, amazing. We, we, uh, amazing. Ralph brought uh, bagels. We like to acknowledge the uh, bagels. Where would you get the bagels today? Jim's. Jim's bagels. Yeah. Jim's bagel with the bacon. They were, they were bacon warm when they came, too. Oh, wow. They were warm. Some, what, kind uh, of che- what kind of cream cheese is that? Bacon and chive. Bacon Ooh. and chive. Delicious. Yeah. Giddy up. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but I didn't have any honey, <laughs> just in case my wife's listening. I had the water and... Uh, he didn't have any. He had egg three. Whites. <laughs> he had three. Egg whites. Uh, uh, we have uh, Ralph t- with us today. Good morning, Gloucester. We have a, a podcast virgin, Chris Spittle with us, a.k.a. Cape Ann Weather. Howdy. There he is. I'm psyched to have him. I have a bunch of questions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bunch of questions. Is and it I, cold outside? He's, <laughs> oh, you got, oh, he's got stuff in front of him, too. He came prepared. It's always good when the guests Nobody can prepared. see this, see? Yeah, yeah. Uh, right, right. I'm yeah. thinking about that. Nobody can see what I got. You can legitimately look straight down and not even engage with us and just rattle off. Now, your if answers. you look at this graph... <laughs> Maybe he could add to the controversy about the song, Baby, It's, it's cold, cold Outside. outside. <laughs> Well, it's a non-controversy as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So, uh, Chris Chris McCarthy's with us. He, he came prepared, unlike the host. Yes. Uh, good morning, Gloucester. Happy birthday, Joe. I rely on. Oh. All, I rely no, on all my. Right. <laughs> you say that every week. Every week. You say... <laughs> How many dog years are you? <laughs> and uh, Kim Smith is with us. Good morning, Gloucester. All right. Uh, first up, a little order of business. Um, we get more recognition and boost up in search engines if you review us on iTunes. And I left the link in the show notes. It's at the very top of the show notes. So if you take a little bit of time and you just go to the link and press five stars, if you feel like you like the, blog, the podcast, right. we would appreciate it. Okay. All right. Yeah, you know what? People have to understand, you don't, if you just press one star, that isn't a good review. I think when people press it, sometimes they think that one star is a good thing. But you got to go to like you got to go all the way to all five stars. Five stars. Yeah, <laughs> right. we want five stars. Right. No, I, I gave right. a, a, a one star, and I was honest. <laughs> Such a prick. Does, does it allow you to put comments? <laughs> yeah, because I want yeah, viewers to let Joe know how valuable Kim, Chris, and Ralph are to this to this show. <laughs> yeah. So well, please you take can... a moment and share your thoughts on. How much you like the, the three of us. And then you can give Joe one star. <laughs> <laughs> and wish him a happy birthday. Do we have a tranquilizer gun? <laughs> we, we could use a tranquilizer gun for Chris, I think. I'm tranquilized right now. Um, <laughs> yesterday, the big news, I think the top of the list was the Middle Street Walk. And oh, yeah. there was a big gloss today. Middle yeah. Street Walk, yeah. lots of trap tree lighting, and maritime gloss to deck the docks. Right. Uh, what I didn't realize is that literally five of our contributors were going to post the deck the dock thing. <laughs> I went down there yesterday to buy. Yeah. So, so you can still buy them. Oh, you can still buy trees. Forty-five dollars for, yeah. and they're nice full trees. Those are nice trees. Yeah. They're really yeah, nice trees. Go down there every day, usually poking around. It's a nice spot. Well, nice. it's a great place yeah. to take photos, right? Well, is it yeah. okay also to mention Wolf Hill also has trees? I get my tree every year from Wolf Hill. So. Well, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to. Building center got a new truckload yesterday. Oh, too. Just, yeah. just so we're fair with yeah. it. Yeah. Yes, just I have no. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, if we're yeah. doing this, my uh, my my, I have to because my. Kate's son Connor, oh. his uncle is Dan Lehman at Lehman's over by Mile Marker. So we got, we're okay. spreading the love. Wait, Everybody yeah. gets Every, love. Everybody so there's Everybody no shortage. No shortage of Everybody gets a treat. Lost. Hey, well, if we're doing this, I got to thank my neighbor because I went across the street and just cut the one in their front lawn. It's beautiful. Hacked it right off. <laughs> Left a big stump in their front yard. <laughs> it was a poplar. <laughs> <laughs> So. What, what kind of tree I love is Fraser. Chris is the only, Fraser only person in town that has an arborvitae for a Christmas tree. <laughs> a Hanukkah bush. Is that, um, a, is that the word the Hanukkah is used? Oh, I don't know. Kim has the Hanukkah necklace now. Yeah, that's that right. Yeah. Ralph, my wife Ralph has, has it. 
necklace. Hanukkah necklace. Star of David. Yeah, it's beautiful. In the shape of a snowflake. And if you they look didn't really know, clear. it was a Star of David, <laughs> but they made it in the shape of a snowflake. snowflake. Yeah, really beautiful. Yeah. So, yep, yeah, we're going to light the menorah tonight. <laughs> You're, so, you're Fra- late. do I know what Fraser Fur is? I know what late. We'll catch what, it. Okay, give us a little education on Fraser Fur. Fraser Fur is um, a, a super, super fragrant, and it holds its needles longer, so it doesn't um, start. Sh- you typically it does, and so they're very full. And then also they have like kind of spiky branches that go outward, and which is really nice for hanging ornaments on. So I, I always look for Fraser Furs. Fraser really, Furs. And they yeah. have them at Wolf Hill, so really nice one. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, so yesterday, a great take. For, so this time of year, always looking for things to do with the kids. Mill Street Walk, because this, this yeah. is kind of like a no-brainer type yeah. of thing. So we yeah. went up, so I'm going to give you the little, little quick rundown. Okay, well, it's awesome. Can went downtown. Great, Joe, please. <laughs> See, I'm fall asleep. <laughs> Went downtown, saw the chorus and the band at uh, City Hall. Okay, City Hall, all decked out. Gingerbread house contest, some amazing gingerbread houses. Sandpiper Bakery for 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 cookies and (laughs) and goodies. Did they have any almond croissants left? I I don't know. Did you miss them? (laughs) I I I had a big. I made myself a big breakfast, so I passed. But the kids loved the 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 cookies there. Yeah. Went down to Maritime Gloucester. And they had it was so there's a there was a ton of different activities down there. So we, we bought our tree, but they had Santa in a dory, mm-hmm. and we took a we took a photo with the family on so it's on Harriet Webster Dock. Right. Santa in the dory. The kids get in the dory with Santa. Kate and I behind, and it's going to be our Christmas card yeah, next year. Well, I saw it. On it's a perfect. Yeah. It's a. I mean, it's yeah. They posted one with just Santa yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Talk with the shack in the back. Yeah, Shacks nice. all decked out. Right. Last night after the tree lighting, I went down and uh, I didn't have a tripod with me, but it, I'm going to go back tonight. But the 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 beal. Yeah, yeah. Sylvina Beal yeah. has all got the lights strung up. The whole and dock the maritime is all, building is yeah. all lit up yeah. really it's nice. It'd be nice to do a time yeah. explosion. Mm-hmm. It's, Absolutely. It's really nice down there. Yeah. It is. And we could be getting some snow. I'll jump into the weather. Oh, hey, hey, we hey. hey. Oh, 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 play that song. Oh, no, 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 wait, before, you do, news. before you do the weather, you got to give me a cue because I can have a little uh, news ticker tape that will come in. So just give me this and I'll get. I'll add that little audio in. But we... Are you, are you, is, give me we the thumbs up. We're getting some light snow on Wednesday, and uh, that could enhance your visual pleasure of Christmas. Wow. I love it. With, wow. you know, now you get, add a, it. get a little frosting on things, like yes. the motif in Rockport. A little frosting, or the the man at the wheel, and down Maritime with the schooners with a little frosting. Just, yeah, you, you will take note of that. I'm I'll sure. Take note of that. There we go. I'm, I'm could happen. Awesome. So okay, then. Like, like most meteorologists, he's probably going to be wrong. <laughs> 50% of the time, they keep it. We'll do- get into that. <laughs> so, um, it could snow. Me it Chris. could snow. Yeah. Well. Well, it could snow Thursday, too. <laughs> Somewhere. Somewhere, exactly. See, that There's was a slight possibility that the sun's going to come out in the next four weeks. There was so there was a so we had a weather we had the weather guy and the whole idea when I brought in the la, the other weather guy right. was that we were gonna be able to like have him make forecasts and then kind of like joke around with when he nails it give him total props yeah. and when he screws it up just like totally like hammer him right and just and have a joke yeah, but as it was he just posted like cartoon pictures of bit emojis of himself every day and whenever there was a big storm and he he, he ghosted on us and he only he posted ghosted. on his facebook page he never posted on good morning gloucester he was a very nice guy though very nice guy <laughs> family guy and everything else but but anyway anyway <laughs> anyway um so anyway at, at maritime gloucester okay. they had the back room they had hot chocolate they had popcorn. So they awesome. had crafts for the kids. They made like a like uh, lobster hats, crab hats. Then they had little tiny wooden uh, buoys that you could paint. So we made ornaments. Oh, I love that. That was a yeah, perfect family day. Perfect. Wow. So anyway, wow. so then Did the girls enjoy it. The girls. <laughs> <laughs> The girls did enjoy it because yeah. it wasn't just about me. Chris, well, I think we should have. Joe sounded like he had a lot more fun than the girls. <laughs> he left them home. <laughs> 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 they were left them home. It won't be any good. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, you know, oh, what we were talking earlier, it's like, they, you know, the, if you leave it up to the kids, they sit in and they watch TV yeah. all day. Like, you have to force yeah. them to get out, yeah. you know, force yeah. family fun. Yeah. Well, um, especially for family fun. Like, I think I think their kids are so schedulized these days that they kind of like just hanging out a little bit. True. But it's But true. you also have to find a balance of, you know, having family fun time, too. So then, at the end of the day, was the lobster trap tree lighting. Chris, I heard you were there prompt... Prompt and early, you got there for the lobster trap tree. You got some no. great videos and pictures. A little upset at my wife today. She All those read, pictures are fake that Charlene posted on Facebook. Fake, fake, <laughs> fake, 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 fake. Fake news. My wife read somewhere that the lobster tree wasn't going to be lit until 5.15. You know what? What usually happens, so right at 4.30, the, the fire truck is already there. And um, we sing Christmas carols, and there's three so- Christmas carols that we sing, then we count down, and then one Christmas carol afterwards. Because everything's correct. cold, and so you really have to get there at 4.30. Yeah. So that's so exactly, and the and tree was happened. lit, the I tree, was yeah, the the, I was there the whole time. Yeah. The problem was that you, you didn't, you wanted to be there the second the tree was lit. Right. So you timed it right. You were sitting at the bar. At the top side grill, <laughs> while all of us were outside singing Christmas songs, fa la 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 la, counting I was down in the tree. there, waiting for my wife and daughter. They walked in, it's and about priority. five minutes later, Ralph walks in, and I said, "Oh, we were just getting up. We want to go see the lobster trap tree lighting." Tree lighting, <laughs> and he's like, uh, "It's over." <laughs> and I'm like, "No, it's five fifty. It's, it was five o'clock at the time." He, and I said, "No, it's it." He has no propensity for cold. That's I call is. bullshit. Yeah. He had when I walked into the bar, he had a full drink in his hand. He had no plans on going anywhere. <laughs> Something was getting lit. <laughs> Something was getting lit. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> My wife said to be there four thirty. We were there four thirty. We sang together. Did My it? wife and I. It was a very Joyous. magical moment. Joyous. Yes. Magical we moment. sang together. And we watched. We helped count down from ten to the one. Wow. The tree lit, and See, it was a wonderful. That's the only reason I moved time. to Gloucester was for that moment. Yeah, and, and you missed it because you're too drunk will, at the top right. side group. It will be exactly the same next year, so you have to just know. To uh, be kudos, kudos to David Brooks, David Brooks. Jason Burrows, all yeah. and the people at Art Haven that do the you know help the kids with the buoys. Yeah, he's just it's, like. It's the, such a huge commitment of time and energy. and. When you put this on Facebook, so people from all over the country, the world, like, look at this and say, that is so cool. It's one. Of the, it's just yeah. another piece that makes Gloucester so cool. I posted a, a, when they were two-thirds up, I think it was a week ago, it was a really heavy, drizzly day. Yeah. They were up there, yeah. passing yeah. the trap, they were two-thirds up. I posted that picture. I got forty-five thousand reaches, yeah, and it was three hundred and eighty shares. Yeah, amazing, you know, around. Yeah. So people were like, "Whoa, you guys do that?" You they know? do a great job. It's so really beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it is. There's nothing Actually, like it out anywhere else. No. Well, China thanked us too because we get the we get the buoys and the lobster traps from China. No, <laughs> no? there's a little tag. On those the are the Russians. Those, the, I mean, those are the uh, the Mainers. The Mainers, the Mainers. use the, oh, the Mainers. decorations that were purchased in China. from China, Chinese sweatshop uh, ornaments sweatshop. on their on their trees. You know yeah. Gloucester tree is only adorned with the Made angel- in your oh, hands. that's the word of the day. Adorned, adorned. angelic, <laughs> angelic <laughs> children of Gloucester oh. hand. That's true. Hand painted. Paint. Bo- uh, Every buoys. single one hand Every painted. One. Fantastic. So what I think also what makes ours very special is that I don't know if you can do this and the main ones is walk through ours. Yeah, we right? have the, there's, there's the, like the doorway. Yeah, door. yeah. We have a doorway. Yeah. That's new. Well, that some of those are only 10 feet tall. Oh, yeah. 10 the feet small tall? Oh, that's so windy. Ones, oh, my God. That's and you so can windy. urinate yeah, well, in one of them. Last night I, <laughs> after the bar, there's a, there was one where I could urinate. There's a little pot. very convenient. I think. I'm not. I didn't hear that. Kim's horrified. You are the horrified. sickest person I've ever met in my entire life. I had to go when I, I left the bar. I was just glad you did. I was there arrested. so long. Can't you just use the bathroom at the bar? But no, I was just trying to get to the tree, tree. And I, you know, with, with the weak prostate that I have. <laughs> I, when I go, when I sit go, I so <laughs> wanna. All right, moving on. Moving on. So Kim, <laughs> speaking of the tree, though, I mean, uh, you're looking for people to send in. Yeah, send, send it's a photos. dead tree now. Did oh, you, I've got did, some. You, hey, did you take a picture with yeah, Kim in front of the like, tree? Did you? Did you? Uh, the McCarthy's no, did. My wife, I did not. Send a photo to her. She's doing a whole collage of pictures. 
of you, you sending your family photos in front of the lobster tree. Uh, She's going to do a big thing. My Kim wife, is. My wife didn't. I don't think so. Uh, Kim Smith, Smith Designs. Oh, the McCarthy's have one, Ralph. At Hotmail.com. So you, I mean, you send, can do it send, any day. Send me any of yours. Kim Smith Designs yep. at Hotmail.com. Okay, at Hotmail. Okay, yeah. sure. And it's designs yeah, with an the, S. I pushed a couple on the, my the other page. Of Family yeah. photos. Because I think if you, if I think if you just tag them, they go to the, um, they go to this thing called Friends Post. But then you don't see that yeah, on yeah. the main page. Gotcha. I'm trying to get them on the main page. Yep. That's why I'm yeah. saying just email them to me. Well, I'm going to be in because trouble I'm now. Sure. We didn't take a selfie in front of the tree. You well, got well, you got two weeks. You got two weeks to do it. A couple weeks to do it. You can do it. I have faith in you. <laughs> it's, it's not a one night only deal. <laughs> he sounds so depressed. Oh boy, I'm going to be in big trouble now. Oh. So I saw you uh, driving by your house. I see you got a beautiful tree up in the corner. I think. Well, I have to tell you about the tree. Every remember. A couple of weeks ago, we wanted to get the the one from Bex. Bex called me two days later. Says your tree's all ready. She must have worked around the clock to make my tree. And I went and picked it up, and uh, I brought it home. Like I said, I was hoping that you wouldn't have to. I bring that home. Like I'm out of cutting down a tree. You know, I don't have to do that any of that. So my wife is very appreciative of the lobster tree. And two days later, I come home. There's a tree. <laughs> There's a tree set up in the living room. Lights, fixed um, uh, ornaments, Bulbs, yeah. everything, 100% done. I walk in, I look at the tree, and at the same time, she's making dinner. It was a perfect night. Wow, it's a, I didn't it's a miracle. To, and the Bruins are on. I didn't have to do a thing. It was perfect. So it was how, exactly. So how did that tree miraculously go up? Did she, she took it care of it? She did everything. She carried it upstairs. She set it up. I put it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, next you're going to tell me you paid for it, too. <laughs> we don't have to. No, 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 one, will that. That. No, no one will believe that. No one will believe that. So, yeah, kudos to my wife for handling Christmas single-handedly this Kim year. Kim Giorgio taking oh. on the big load. Well, my wife, I should say, I should give her credit for adorning our little Weber grill with the, she put a little mini Christmas tree with the lights all around oh, it. Oh, I love She did that last year, too. She did that last year. Yeah. Did you Beautiful. post something? Is she going to? Yeah, I, I just posted it. Oh, yeah. So it'll be another, another thing. Uh, Chris Biddle is with us. Chris. Hey, welcome, hey, Chris. Chris. I, I'm going to say man. that 98% of the people won't recognize the name Chris Spittle, but probably 80% of the people will recognize Cape Ann Weather. Because Cape Ann Weather has become an institution now. How many years have you been doing Cape Ann Weather? 20 years now. Really? I bought I wow. bought the URL for the website uh, in 99, uh, 98. Wow. When I was wow. going to web, uh, when I was going to internet design, you know, web design and graphic design. A year, a uh, year after, wait, wait, you said 98? 98. Eight ninety nine. Yeah. So yeah, like twelve, wow. ten years before Good Morning yeah. Boston. Right. Um, huh. But I I find so on on Twitter your proli- I see you I follow you through Twitter. Right. But the graphics you put and the analysis you put up, I think what makes it special is it's really tailored to Gloucester, <laughs> to Gloucester because right. because Gloucester to Hamilton. He's from Gloucester, Joe. Well, there you go. That would make sense. I mean, but why would he give you? Why, why, why would he give you? But I live in Gloucester now. Why would he give you the weather for Boston? Well, for I'm just saying for us, for people right. around here. So Gloucester's weather, even to to a town as close as Hamilton, can be drastically different. Am I right? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. About a month ago, we got a snowstorm. On this side of the island, um, uh, the east side of the island, back, you know, the back shore and all that stuff. Nothing. Basically nothing. An inch of wet mashed potatoes because it turned to rain real quick. The water's 50 degrees. It's easterly. On the back spine of the Cape, I was I had three or four people say I got three inches, four inches before it changed to snow. I mean before it changed to rain. Yeah. I People that I, that follow me in Rowley, Ipswich, Hamilton, and this is all the area that I cover, Eastern Essex County, they had six, seven, eight inches. Yeah. Now there's your gradient right there. You go up to almost nine inches on the west side of Raleigh, to the coast of nothing. Isn't that wild? So you, so there's a huge thing, and huge and, and I'll just say one of the things that amazed me. I used to work at Varian. I worked there for 20 years. When they kicked me out, that's when I went to web design school in '98. I used to uh, our office used to be in Woburn, and I remember a couple of times leaving Woburn, beautiful, sunny, crisp, clear day, just like today. I'd get to 
uh, what we used to call Manchester Flats, yeah. Yeah. Mount Ann Park, yeah. and I'd come down off the hill and I'd see dark clouds. Right. And I'd get to Rockport and it'd be three inches of ocean effect snow on the ground. It's you know, I, yeah. I mean, nobody yeah. inland knows that we're getting three or four inches of snow right now. Yeah. You know, the te- the weathermen don't know it in Boston. Well, you know what? They always talk about the Cape, and they're yeah. talking about Cape Cod. They oh, n- oh. They never say. My, I wrote a whole <laughs> blog post about the Cape and the islands. Oh, that's right. Uh, but adversely, you can leave Gloucester in a rain, and you can get up to that same Manchester Flats area, and there's five inches of snow on the ground yeah. because it's colder inland. We're well, surrounded by this, the ocean water, and Joey, you know the temperature of the water. Well, it's forty. It, it works inversely in the in the spring. So in the yeah. spring, when <coughs> the place like Hamilton or whatever has a seventy degree day, we're probably going to be sixty, 60. because yeah. the water it, right. is you know we stay right. warmer later yeah. and cooler. And cooler. And we get the automatic I'll, I'll come home sometimes from my office in Middleton, and it's yeah. clear skies, blue, sunny, beautiful. Come over. The bridge, and I can't see my hand in yeah. front of my face with the yeah. fog. Yeah. yeah, the fog too. Same yeah. thing. So, yeah. Chris, what are some of the what are some of the things um, that keep you going? Like, you have a tremendous following, and but like, you get this. What time of the day do you get started analyzing the weather? Uh, and what is four. your generally your lead? Like, when when there is this is the most boring thing. Every day it's clear and cold and <laughs> and thirty. Two degrees. This morning, I one of my posts was uh, uh, sleep, live, repeat. Sleep, or, uh, live, sleep, repeat. Live every day, over and over again. We, we, we're into like uh, the eighth day straight of this same weather. Mm. After all, I heard about was when is this rain going to start? Right. Right. Yeah. Now we got. Now we've got this right. whole thing of, uh, and it's going to end this weekend. We're going to get a pretty good rain this coming weekend. Uh, Luke Bryan uh, wrote a song. Sunrise, sunset. Yeah, yeah. Sunrise, I'm always yeah, looking for sunset, weather lyrics to kind of like key, key into. But the so um, your firewood. If you're gonna you're, if you're gonna cover up your firewood, this weekend is the the weekend to yeah, cover up your firewood. Yeah, I don't prognostically. I don't see a, a white Christmas. You don't because it, by temperature, the only thing what I I don't look at storms more than seven days out. Right. Um, f- inside five days, like five days from now, I can I'm confident with what is going to happen. Seven days, I'm kind of iffy, and I'm writing not a forecast. <laughs> Chris last <is> March, <laughs> last March we had the four easters. Right. Yeah. We had four nor'easters yeah. in a row. Yeah. I can name the one person right. that's, that's not in Boston <laughs> that got the fourth one right. Yeah. yeah. A Boston meteorologist almost got fired for responding to people on Twitter. Really? He, he got it so wrong. I've never tooted my horn, but I got it right. Breaking news! But I got it right. And, 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 and well, no, they, but my followers tooted it for me. Did you see what so and so said on TV? I don't watch TV weather. Yeah. I do not so, watch TV so weather. So, where do you get all. your information from? I look on Twitter, and I look at the guidance of the you know the computer models. Now, if somebody gave me crap a couple of years ago about you never use computer models, and then they're on there posting. Well, guidance is telling me. He's yeah. just changing the name for what right. a computer model is. It's yeah. guidance. Right. And right. then another guy will say, we're getting a strong signal for a storm next year. He's not saying computer model. He's just saying it's a signal. It's <laughs> yeah. 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 He's got a little signal with, yeah. you know, with snowflakes falling out of it. But uh, that's, I use that, uh, and I use common sense. I mean, we've, we're surrounded by warmer water. Um, the winds play a huge effect. And there's something called the 4070 benchmark the latitude longitude that intersects south of Chatham and east of central New Jersey. And if, sto- if, if a nor- northeast storm goes over that, that's our worst storm. Mm-hmm. If it comes inside of it, you, it's so close to land that it pulls in warmer air and we get rain. If it's outside of it, we get less precipitation, but more likely snow because it's going to drag more cold air over Runs. the top of it because it's further out. What, was that, that what was that intersection that you said? 4070. Otherwise known as the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah, they, they call it the benchmark. Right. Every, the every, everybody Triangle? uses it. Huh. Everybody uses it when they're talking about huh. storm forecasts, uh, you know, te- in a technical right. sense. Right. They'll say it's, uh, this is a benchmark storm. Well, I, so it's like, ding, you know, to me. Where did you like, learn all this? All self Self-taught. Self-taught. Year, self-taught. I've never it's being completely obsessed with it, and a year in, a year out. Yeah. You know. I'll, let me, I'll tell you one thing. Um, 
I did a little bit of a research because I was looking at what uh, what they use. I look at uh, there's certain things. Uh, Channel Four does one. Jeremy Reiner, who's on Channel Seven, I really have a lot of respect for him. Um, they do a winter forecast, and and I I don't have any uh, faith in. Um, Long range, winter. like I said, I don't like to go long range more than two weeks at the most. Well, can I ask you and, some? And, oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, oh, I was just going to say. So I looked up the ten top snowstorms, okay, and I looked up the ten top winters, okay. Now the ten top snowstorms are mostly weak El Ninos, and with two of them in there being a moderate El Nino. Now we're going into an El Nino winter. Which means we're what? going from neutral, from La Nina yeah. to El Nino. We're at the uh, neutral center point, going from one to the other, into an El Nino. So, which that, means, so that means it's weak. Is that a lot of precipitation? Well, it, it just means that most of our... We're go, so if we're going into an El Nino, it's going to start out weak. Most of these storms on here are from a weak El Nino. So you might draw the conclusion that right. we could get a, a decent size, you know, really good... And when, you, and when you say we're going into a week El Nino, do you mean like for this for this season, this year, yeah. or this month, or you yeah. know what I mean? Like so, because the, the El Ninos last for it will last for like a year or something. A year or two, yeah. Right. It's, okay. it's, Does that um, mean a lot of precipitation? No, it's, it's, El Nino. It's where the wind. El Nino are. only lasts for like one year, typically. Yeah. Right. But La Nina, which is the standard, which is a normal, when lasts a little like, longer, explain, for two or three years. Explain what El Nino and La Nina. are. El Nino is when the winds, the trade winds, uh, um, prevailing, are, are trade. prevailing trade trade winds. What it basically is is the water temperature in the Pacific Ocean. When the trade winds are going east to west, it pushes all the warm water towards Asia. And you think about this: this is a this is a giant planet, right? But you think it's like you like the harbor getting all the warm water pushed yes. to one side. And so, what is that called? A la, that's called a La La Nina, right? La Nina yeah. is going east. Pushing it east to, to west, west. Okay. pushing all the warm water here, okay. and the cold water has to go somewhere, so it comes up next to South America. In an El Nino year, the, the trade winds push back, and they kind of battle in the middle, and much more warmer air is uh, off of South America. So when the jet stream comes down, comes down over that, it can bite into warmer air and the warmer water, it can bite into more moisture. More storm. Yeah. Okay. Make more but storm. El Nino years typically are average. Mm -hmm. They're typically average. It's the transition the between transition the years. two oh, that make it oh. that they, that these storms are all mm -hmm. seem to have have come in. Oh, you know, and I didn't know that. I started doing when I knew I was coming on here. I thought, well, oh. it'd be, that'd be interesting to know what yeah. I'm talking about yeah. as far as how they look at these huh. these long range. Long range. Um, huh. uh, I don't really care about the winter. How about the summer? following it. Warm. Warm? Warm? Yeah. yeah. Warm. Nice. All right. Somewhere. All right, get the somewhere. boat ready. Get the boat ready. <laughs> somewhere. It's going to be hot somewhere. Buenos Aires may be warm. So do you think we've had like that? Torn out there. I think it's been very cool this fall, unusually cool. I don't know if that's specifically and wet. And wet. And wet. Where did this one uh, rank on uh, in, historically as far as a wet winter? Uh, uh, fall. fall. I, I don't know. I know we got th the average rainfall for November is just under four inches, and we got... Twelve, was it? Well, we got ten here. What I do is I tap into four different weather stations that are on Weather Underground when I do a rainfall, so I do an average. Mm. But I don't want to say, oh, they got seven inches at Rockport High School, which has a good machine. And I look at the one down on Hot Street, and they got two inches less. So I figure there's either something with the machines, or there's something... That, that gradient yeah. from one side of the island to the other. Basically, the island has its own microclimates. If you think about that snowfall that went from zero to four inches across a, what, five-mile-wide island? Mm. You know, that's a, pretty, that's a pretty good swing for a short little area. But I used an average of four machines. So, uh, but it was just under 10 inches, so we got three times the normal. Yeah. I, and I don't, I don't have... I, I'm sure I could look up uh, at Beverly Airport. Beverly Airport's are closest official point where like they'll you'll see it on they always show on tv uh 
and, and when I say I don't watch TV weather, but I'm going to reference they always show on TV, yeah. I see the graphics they're going to put right. on TV on Twitter. Right. That's, that's how I know what they're yeah, putting on TV. Yeah. And, and that's why you'll always see Beverly. You'll never see nothing for Cape Ann because there's no official source. Weather sh- weather sh- you should put one right here. Air- yeah. Airports are what they typically Mount do. Washington. That's, a, yeah. that's an official one, right? So, yeah, yeah. So based on your, just based on um, El Nino alone, right? Yeah. We, we might have a snowy winter and we might have a warm summer. So yeah, the, yeah, the summer, that's so far out. So far Again, out. again I don't even, because it's I don't even delve into lie. the winter. But, but because it's lie. El Nino. But basically... <laughs> Basically, like on what the the, the, what I was just showing you about all those yeah. storms yeah. was, you know, it's very likely to have a couple of big storms. Big I mean, storms. Yeah. I wouldn't Mixed doubt in that. Yeah. The reason we had those four four easters last right. March right. was this giant high pressure in the middle of the Atlantic was blocking everything coming across. Oh, so it bunched up. And, yeah, they, they kind they of stopped, bunched. and then they had to come up the coast right. and go over the top. And the, and this pie was like from below the equator. Dropped to Greenland. Wow. So it was hitting it. It was like running into a guardrail. It had to go somewhere. So they would kind of just, okay. Go up the it, was, it was like the, the, the path of least resistance right. eventually. Right. Huh. But I that, saw a satellite picture of all four together. They look identical. Huh. What, what were the characteristics that put that winter? Was it three years ago, the 2015? It's Snowmageddon. 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 What were the characteristics that made that happen? A weak El Nino. A week El Nino. A week El Nino. Like two, we're going into. two of the biggest storms on that list are from that, uh, from that, uh, mm. 2015 winter. Mm. You know, the, the early, not 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 the uh, four, uh, 14, 15 winter. Right. Uh, two of the biggest storms in that top ten list are from that time frame. Now you gotta remember, we only had four inches of snow Through into January. the middle of January. I know, yeah. I remember. Okay. I remember we had nothing, saying, and everybody's okay. saying yeah. we're almost there. Yeah. February and March, I remember right? That. We're almost yeah. there, yeah. and then we got hammered. I moved Absolutely to Gloucester hammered. in February, and that's when the shit hit the fan. I, I saw every storm. Yeah, yep. <laughs> that, that was that was nasty. Jeez, yeah. See, the, the the number six and seven are both from that on this list of top so ten. End of, of January and, and the first January, two weeks in February. Right, and two weeks later, there was, a, there was we got, two feet and then two feet. Yeah, four feet of snow. Yeah, yeah. and that's just those two storms. I, don't I always get a kick out. You know what, uh, in a strong El Nino, uh, do you remember there was a huge blizzard in 2003? And there was a strong El Nino during a perfect storm. Those oh. two popped out at me. Wow. Oh. As, and that's not a snow event. Right. A, yeah. You know, that was right. just an ocean, you know, ocean a, event. Yeah. A, basically, a, huh. it was a hurricane. Yeah. That's something I don't. I I get uh, I get pretty <laughs> tempted as to why they didn't. It did turn back into a hurricane, but they left it at Hurricane Eleven instead of calling it Hurricane Henry. So my plow guy, should I pay him up front for the entire winter? For a fixed or rate. Per yeah, storm. he's a good friend of mine. Yeah. <laughs> or per <laughs> storm. So now that now that Chris is depressed, us <laughs> depressed about the. Uh, no, oh, this coming winter, not well, you. I, I like it. I feel but like the it good was... news is that the summer is going to be nice. Yeah. He said, guaranteed. He says it's too far. Guaranteed. Now, see, this is why you make weathermen wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard a weatherman say guaranteed? Yes. <laughs> You're watching the wrong when they well, call the good... school off When they call school off a day before... And we get a dusting. <laughs> so he, so now Chris is going to go out to uh, Home Depot and buy his wife a new snow shovel for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, you and, and some sunscreen. Oh, Chris, the weatherman. <laughs> Come on, make sure you make, make one more point on this. You asked me about how I got into it or whatever, and uh, this this list of top ten is all in the '60s, '70s, the 2000s, and all that. Number ten is March third through fifth, nineteen sixty. That's the storm that introduced me to weather. Oh, wow. Yeah, because okay. yeah. I was five years old. Oh, there you go. And, My and birthday it was, was like, on the fifth. It was like unbelievable. We couldn't go anywhere. That was one of those, that was one of true, what they call French toast alert days. Yeah, yeah. You know, when they, when they have a big weather event, you know, snow event coming, they call it the French toast alert. Because everybody goes out and gets the ingredients for French toast, yeah, yeah. the <laughs> eggs, the bread, the milk, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a true, we were stuck for like, because I lived down a little lane in Rockport. We couldn't get out for a week. Do you consider the storm of 78 the, the, the benchmark? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. When we were kids, yeah. was it a 78? Do you, yeah. can I, I'll tell you a little story. And this is very significant. It's historical, and I'm, I'm 
kind of bothered the, the author of the book, Ten Hours to Dawn, didn't find me. Um, Quirky used to be right down here in Cripple Cove. And I worked at Joey Enos's uh, radio shop, Sandy Bay Communications. And him and Kenny, Kenny Wilkinson came in at 3 o'clock that afternoon. And they had a handheld radio, but they wanted to put channel 23 and something. They had 16 on it, but they wanted to put two more crystals in it. And that's back then. You put crystals in. You didn't tune it. like I was, Now you just push, push the numbers in. Yeah. They came in and uh, to the store, and Joey said, yeah, I can do it right away. Because they, they were thinking of going out. Um, on the can do, which they did obviously. Yeah. So we were one of the last couple people to see him. Wow. Because yeah. after they left here, they came down here. And then they called Bucko, who was up, I think, lived up back here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Did we hear the audio of the, of hmm? the, the audio of the. Um, didn't someone have audio? There's an audio on YouTube yeah. of, the, of the last thing. And they said they were on the handheld. Right. I don't mm -hmm. know what channel they were on. So we like say. it matters, but. Uh, but Can do, what is the name of a, a, a boat? pilot boat? Pilot boat. And they went out, they heard that the Global Hope in Salem, a big tanker, was dragging anchor. And the guy was a Greek captain and he didn't communicate very well with the uh, uh, Coast Guard. So they were worried. So they sent the 44317 out of the Coast Guard and went down and they got pummeled. They lost their antennas, they limped into Beverly Harbor. And Quirky and them thought they had lost it, or they were just out there floundering. And that's what initiated his wanting to go out and save them. I mean, a year before, he had saved all those people off the Chester Poling. In their boat off went of down? Eastern Point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Qu oh. Quirky's boat went down? Yeah, they all right. died. Yeah, oh, yeah. the boat, uh, it's called the Grumpus now. Mm -hmm. It's in Beverly. Mm -hmm. um, but that was, that's, a, that's a, you know, it's one of the things that I, I've written a couple times about it. Eric Fisher on Channel 4. Um, saw the story one time and made mention of it. But, anyway, yeah, I think 78 is... 78 and the Perfect Storm were two of the most unbelievable yeah. storms we've had around here, I think. that's To me, the, I mean, the, 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 from my memory, the, the 78 one. 78. Mm -hmm. You know, it would be cool is if you um, sent that list of the 10 worst storms and we could post that on Good Morning Gloucester. Do you want to do that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah you, you could. Awesome. If somebody, yeah. you know, listen to the podcast, yeah. might want to see it. They yeah, can, you know, reference list. it. I think that would be There's interesting. a couple in there. Yeah. Um, the other thing with the El Nino, just real quick, was uh, don't have it on. There's um, during the 2015 Snowmageddon, there was an enormous uh, um, pool of warm water. I talked about the warm water uh, being closer to uh, uh, South America. And that's what creates the El Nino or changes the jet stream. Well, during 2014 and 15, the waters in the Gulf of Alaska were very warm. Mm. Now, then they've settled down. Now they're climbing again oh, wow. for this, for this, this uh, El Nino. for that. You see the, see the yeah, red? I, I um, see that. Now they're huh. climbing. Huh. So it'd be interesting to see how, you know, how it correlates. hindsight is always 20-20, right. Right, especially we, with weathermen. Right, well, we're, now we know. Well, we'll all be on the lookout for snow. <laughs> I yeah, no, it's, it's, so I, it's always warm, interesting to me. I love it. The graphics. So, so, so I guess if at the end of this segment, the point for me to everyone else is, and I'm going to put a link to his, um, to his Facebook page, he said to send people there. I happen to follow him on Twitter. Yeah. So it's an you know Twitter for me is an easy stro uh, scroll it's to easy see what's happening. Yeah. But his graphics are very detailed and. Um, and I try to put every facet uh, on them. Like you'll see on, uh, I'll see a wind graphic that they're going to put on Channel Four, and it's just it's just about the wind. There's a wind advisory, and they just show. Then they'll put another graphic up for uh, coastal flood advisory because mm -hmm. of the waves and. You know, I put it all on one, as you've seen. Yeah. Um, what I do is I anticipate what we're going to get. Like, I, th I know we're going to get a wind advisory. Well, it's a full moon, and we're going to have easterly. I know we're going to get a coastal. Right? And, and I'll say one thing. That, so, I, so I make the graphic ahead of time. All i got to do is plug in the times. Ah, that the national, and this is all National Weather Service yeah. information, yeah. not mine. I don't, I don't pretend to know right. anything that they do. Everything... And the one thing I don't do, Joey, and when I do those graphics, I do add marine uh, yeah. parts of it, yeah. but I don't do anything marine on its own because I feel, like you, like anybody else, I know a few guys that have boats, these guys know where to get their weather. 
Mm. They're not going to listen to me. And I don't mean not listen to me, but they're, they're not looking to me for the weather. They'll listen to no weather radio. Mm. I mean, how many, do you, do you turn that on like every time you head out of the harbor? No, no I have, weather. I have, what uh, do you use? I, I built an app. Uh, Did you? Yeah, yeah. For, it's an Android app, but I have, uh, I'll tell you what I use, and you tell, and you critique, you gotta critique the, the, what the segments of the app uh, for weather that I used. So I put in the marine forecast that I use is from Wonderground. Oh, yeah, yeah. Marine yeah. weather for AN 251. What is AN 251? That's the coastal zone. That we that like, like uh, the, the land zone that I use is 007, is Eastern Essex County National Weather Service Zone 007. Yeah. They, they apparently must start like zip codes on the East Coast and right. up Northeast because they're real low numbers. Like right. a, a zip code to the so laws. Maine would might be oh one it, it two, could be oh, oh, two, yeah oh, so. oh one oh one or something yeah, like yeah, that yeah. you know but two yeah that's the uh, the what they call the ANS, ANSI code for the but that's that's the right one to have that goes from Merrimack out twenty five miles down to Coastal Ego, down to Swampscott and out twenty five so like so that. I use that I use the uh, AccuWeather radar so there's yep. a little radar section to it. Um, then I have the Gloucester, uh, the Glo- Mass Bay buoy report uh, from windfinder.com. Which buoy? 029? 44029? Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Buoy cast? <laughs> I, have, I use buoy cast. This. Uh, buoy cast? Buoy cast. Oh. Jeez. And that graphic that you're talking about, Joey, that I do. <laughs> buoy A01. Down, down in the corner. Yeah. I got buoy A01. 44029. 44029. That's the closest one to us. Yeah, that's, that's the one, one I, I use. use. That's on that graphic that I do with when I yeah, that's nice. when I post all the hazards, the headlines from the National one. Right. You look on the right side, it shows where the buoy is, uh, southeast of Chatham. And yeah. uh, that's that's the one that I... Well, the, I, I the reason I like your graphics is like it's it, one thing. And you look, and you get like you really get a good picture of what's going to happen. Gonna happen. Yeah. So for me, my everything to me, yeah. I don't necessarily care about precipitation. Right. I care about wind. Yeah, yeah. you know, wind yeah. is like is going to tell me if my boats are going fishing or not. Yeah, you know what I mean. And, yeah. and, and that's how I, ha- you know, kind of yeah. my life is guided by sure. how many boats are out fishing. Or, you know what, what? You know if it's like to, if, if we have three it, good days in a row, right. um, come forecast and. The day just before that is a little bit iffy. They probably won't go on that iffy day because they know they can get through the gear the next three days. Yeah. Now, if if it, if the, the if the weather is kind of a continuation of not great right. weather, yeah. I'll, it, the, the boats will be spread out, out because right. there's no particular great stretch where that you know yeah. they yeah. say, oh, well, we'll really go and try to get a lot of go- gear hauled yeah. this particular day because of and is it is it dependent on which direction the wind's blowing or well it's funny because we have we have lobster boats from all around the all around the cape rockport <laughs> right lanesville yeah. east gloucester some guys fishing magnolia you know Ma- right. manchester and stuff like that so so, so if we have northeast wind on one day right it's good for, it's good for the people on the other side yeah. of the island yeah. yeah and then if we have it on Right. Uh, southwest wind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's good for the other. Yeah. So there's always someone yeah. that could be could be fishing okay. if they're yeah. if at the certain time of the year where the lobsters are close to the land that they could be in the lee of the land. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, right. but right now the right now the, yeah. the lobsters have, have pushed off now. So if it's kind of windy, like the guys that are catching lobsters, they're out kind of they're exposed. So yeah. there's no lee of the land where they're fishing right now. Oh. You know, yeah. uh, lee of the land. In the lee of the hiding land. behind the shadow. So the, the wind. wind yeah. So if you have a big. So if the you know if the say so right where we are, right here, Captain Joe and Sons, where we're located, is probably the best place in the whole city in Rocky Neck to to two. There's a big, basically a mountain behind us. So hard northeast goes yeah. right over us. Yeah. It's a duck pond here. It could be blowing fifty yeah. miles an hour. It's a duck pond where our boats are tied up, mm. on the other side of the harbor. <laughs> Those boats are getting yeah. beat to shit, mm-hmm. you know. So mm-hmm. we're we're very like our location in this snug little cove here is mm-hmm. is ideal for ideal. For, yeah. for boats to tie up. When you when you say the other when you say the other the harbor, side of the harbor, do you mean like um, <laughs> by stage four? By um, well, the one that's facing you know the uh, on uh, nope. you know, anything that's facing the opposite the side. side. You know? Okay, yeah. all right. But yeah, because the northwest, uh, the like the Lanesville area. 
gets really pummeled, and they're like kind of mm -hmm. right around the point oh, yeah. from Halibut Point. They're right. kind of facing northwest, right? But the seawalls come down in nor'easters, so it's yeah. kind of like the, the the curling of the swells come in and pummel that wall. They did a beautiful job on that wall, by the way. So wouldn't the they? Wouldn't they, mean, wouldn't they then incredible tuck their, undertaking? Like yeah. how much money they put yeah. into that? Yeah. I guess it's all rebod now and. They didn't just stack rocks like they used to, yeah. like they did after 78, after the perfect storm. Right. They didn't just stack the rocks up like like nice, neat dominoes. Yeah. They they did actual, uh, a shout out to Andy Roby, he's been down there photographing it uh, it? constantly. Lane, um, Lane's Cove. Lane. Lane's Cove. It's this and, huge kind of like... Yeah. Yeah. Rock. It's, uh, no, Gloucester. Gloucester, Gloucester, but it's basically right before Rockport. the Rockport line going around. That, that <laughs> you line. could call it Rockport. Lanesville is, is Lanesville is would tell you that they're, they're yeah, probably oh, geez, they're more associated with Rockport. Gloucester, Rockport. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, oh, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the little tiny. They have their own parade on the Fourth of July. Right yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's an annex. But they did a great job. The, the infrastructure inside of it with all the rebar. But we'll see how it goes. See well, it's interesting. Like storm of the century. It's interesting because we every every couple years now the. The footbridge at the Harbor Beach gets wiped out, yeah. Yeah. and you know there's a, it's always the debate whether, you know, what do you do? You put a fortune into developing, designing something that may be more permanent, or do you just kind of like fix it as it goes? Like, yeah. You know, like not a, don't spend a ton of money, just knowing yeah. that it's gonna. This, I was out there yesterday, and it looks like someone's surveying. They have some bean poles up with some numbers on the stakes because mm. it's all eroding around. Yeah. I noticed that. Already? The, the, the yeah. bridge. Did they pour new footings when they put it up this time? Do you know? I'm not sure. Anybody Tim goes down there all the time. To know if they put a new basin. Or, well, yes, that, could, that can change the flow, too. What, what they were doing mm. was um, they put the... I didn't see any concrete being poured or anything like no, that, but it, they were going it, way it, down with bigger... Driving, yeah. driving the, um, piles, the piles down. Yeah. There's a I lot didn't of see beach any erosion. cement being poured or huh? anything There's like a that. lot of beach erosion. Oh, yeah, it's bad. It's all the pipe and clovers. It's changing <laughs> the the sand design, and I think we got to get rid of all the piping plovers. Wait, we're going to be hearing a lot more about piping plovers yeah. in the coming months. In the, the, warm, in the warm, no, with, with the no, warm summer the, coming. No, in this nice, in this nice, uh, we're going to be talking a lot about piping plovers coming up because things are there's going to be a to battle. Happen. There's going to be a battle between the the snowy owls eating the piping <laughs> plovers. That does happen. Are uh, the piping plovers yeah. like mating right now? No, they're um, right now. They're like on North Carolina and South Carolina and oh, uh, Turks and Caicos. They're on they're vacation. Right, they're on vacation. They're hanging they're out they're with the ruddy turnstones. <laughs> right, right. Oh, so they don't right. stick around. They don't live under no. the sand or anything. No. <laughs> you know, you know. It's funny about the storm. You say about the storm damage in the footbridge. You know, the end of T Wharf in Rockport. Yeah. Is you know it appears is stone goes out and goes like a T, right. and. Um, on the right side, there used to be a giant four-story ice building there, and okay. uh, old pitches. So anyway, that's gone. That's where the Yacht Club is. Right. And they built out from the stone, they built about a 20-inch where the lobster guys back up, and they load their bait. Um, it goes out, and it's a wooden structure. It goes out, a wooden uh, wharf off of the pier, and it goes out about 20 feet and goes across. Every storm... Gets wiped out. You know, it, it, the water comes in. Hits the stone. Where's the water gonna go? Up, yeah. Blows the planks right off every yeah. single time. Mm -hmm. I, what, I was down there one day, and the, the engineers going, "Hmm, what are we gonna do?" I said, "Put a metal grate with holes in it." Yeah. So it can go. So through. people can look down, and Brilliant. the water can go up. Yeah. Right. And planks. Planks. <laughs> planks. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like a his, hysterical district. Yeah. Oh, we gotta have what's there before, you know, the well, rock was Yeah. Well, security. that too. Yeah. They put the grate. <laughs> yeah. And, that See, they they buy the needed. planks at Smith Hardware. And, you know. <laughs> Just speaking of job security, quickly, are the meteorologists um, <laughs> measured? Like, is, is there a way to pull up a meteorologist and see his score. their their score because i mean we're, we all <laughs> Wouldn't that, be cool? that would be interesting i you know what i've never called myself a meteor meteorologist because i'm not degreed i've always called myself a reporter you know somebody said, hey did you see the weather report you know a reporter i'm not like a reporter uh, so, so like a guy reporting on a game will go before the game during the game and after the game and tell you about it um some people say, well, you guys, the, the degree guys, well, you guys are forecasters, not meteorologists. I've never claimed to be a me meteorologist and, and wouldn't want to be, but no, they'd be, I don't think they want to be. Well, I'm not I don't suggesting think they want to be. It's no, self-performance. I'm talking about a third party. I, 
you know, yeah, one yeah, review just, board, a meteorologist review you know, board. It, it would be, it would. I think it would be really cool if yeah. someone like had a someone had a, a website that it. went back, you know, like recorded their predictions. Yeah. And then, and then. Uh, well, the, the big thing now is because Twitter never dies. Right. There's always a tweet. Yeah. As right. they say, there's always a tweet. Yeah. People I don't go know. back and say, "Do you remember what you said about this two weeks ago?" Yeah, you know, right. and they only have to go back two weeks to say <laughs> right. what they said. And it, well, you know, and and that's that's why limit it to just meteorologists. I think everybody yeah. in the world should be well, based on their performance. Based. All performance. The world would be much more efficient if everybody got paid based on Stop their performance. Pickers. <laughs> yeah. Stop uh, pickers, yeah. Back to real quick. Back to a, a point Kim made um, about uh, uh, the birds. It? About the uh, no, about the meteorologists is um, the the Cape and the Islands. Oh yeah. Was um, <laughs> I wrote a blog post. I have an obscure blog. I really don't throw it out there. I post when I post to it. I post it on the Cape and was a Facebook page. Um, but I did a thing on the Cape and the Islands and and how they avoid saying capes. All they have to do is say capes, capes in the right, islands. Right. And that would, that would settle, one, <laughs> one S would settle the whole <laughs> right. thing. There's two capes, right? <laughs> um, but you know, but they, we have, they, different, they, we they, have different forecasts. And though, they do that yeah. in the winter so much, and the, and the Cape is desolate in the winter. Cape yeah, Cod right. is desolate in the winter. And we're so popular. And we've got, we've got 85,000 more residents oh, in yeah. eastern Essex County huh. than they have. Oh. By census, right? That's you know, interesting. That, yeah, they yeah. grow by almost two hundred thousand in the summer. Right, but, that's but who talks about you know right. the Cape and the Islands is going to be not you know right. eighty and it's going to be eighty eight here. You know, there's no difference. Right. But the Cape and the Islands gets rain, and everybody else gets snow. But guess what? The little Cape up here got rain too. But, they, <laughs> but what they do is they put the they put the snowplow icon right. This I get this all the time. Did you see Channel Four? They put the snowplow icon right over Cape Ann, you know, like on the map, like so you don't see it. Yeah. So they got to figure out the colors is three to six. So that got, but then there's a plow in the way. That one uh, S would make a big it's difference. Funny. What's that? The one S. The one yeah, S, Capes yeah. and the Island. Because we have one S that makes a big difference around here too. <laughs> Oh. Well, it's great to have you on, Chris. Yeah, thank you. And, thanks, uh, for, so, thanks for allowing me to share. Yep. So go check out and follow his page, Cape Ann Weather, on uh, on Facebook. It's a, it's a simple uh, search, and I have a, a link to it. You can get to it that way and make sure you like it and follow it. Um, I wanted to give a, I wanted to talk about this guy. So, I, so you know how people submit photos to for Good Morning Gloucester? Yeah, yeah. I got this guy, and tell me if, if, I'm, <laughs> if I'm being crazy about this. This guy submits photos, and he says, make sure you tell me when you post it. Okay, I'm like, okay, whatever, right? Okay, and well, I, so it's the weekend or whatever, and I kind of don't post it the first day. Second day, he said, I, I inevitably I get an email. Uh, I didn't see my photos on the blog. Is something, you know, is there something wrong? And I'm just like, no, I just haven't posted them yet or whatever. And then the third day, if they're not up by the third day, he's he... <laughs> has this thing where he accuses me of playing favorites and he would and, and this is where it gets aggravating to me so I'm at a point where I'm not posting his stuff anymore Yeah, it's this passive aggressive wording I would think that you would want to promote other local artists and not just your own on the blog it has nothing to do with favorites sure. at all it's just like wow. And and because he has this passive aggressive beha email behavior, yeah. it makes me want to post his stuff way less. Yeah, am I wrong here? No, I, I don't no. think you're wrong. I don't but, think you're wrong. You know, but then I mean, then Chris I mean, shows up in person and not use the case. <laughs> no, I think I personally think that's super nervy. And he doesn't. He, if he's saying if he's saying tell me when you post it. That means he's not bothering to even. That's what I said. Yeah. Not well, even well, look at the rest of the yeah. blog. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm only gonna. I'm only gonna look when when, when my my, when my pictures, pictures are, up. are up there. And then also he's showing a complete lack of concern that you might have other things you have to be doing. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. No. We went to the Topside Grill last night. We did. It was excellent. Phenomenal. Oh. Yeah. One of my favorite yep. spots now. Yep. So yeah, we go there and. Um, Chris really likes the bartender. <laughs> our, our waitress was was very Taylor and Val very yeah. patient. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor was a male. Yeah, Val, he, he did a great job, and then Val yeah. took over after that. And I think we've had Val before. She's super nice. She's, She's funny. Yeah. 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 When I say patient with our group, I think that was the point that I would use. 
So we had we had a, a, a big gang there, and we were, you know, whenever Chris is in the group, oh, yeah. it turns into a shit. It turns into a shit show. Jeez, that's it. I'm and, not uh, going out with you guys anymore. <laughs> Promise. <laughs> <laughs> but the food was fantastic. Oh, really, yeah. I think a lot of people Excellent. overlook Topside yeah. Grill, but it's, it's it's not to be missed. No, they, we, we went recently. I had the, some of the best oysters I've had in a long time. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's really usually nice. it's you're sweating it up. Right. Now usually, you're freezing. Usually it's boiling in here. Chris, go get the heat. Put, put turn the heat up in the corner. <laughs> right, she's the only one cold. We're fine. Yeah, Something gonna... <laughs> might catch on fire. We turn yeah, the heat like, on. Yeah. No, no, I'm not. So I'm much the, dust on the freaking if heater you guys, over here. If you guys are comfortable, then no, okay. No, he'll turn it up for you. That's all right. Um, so there's that. The um, which one, Joe? Oh, stop it! Look, what is this heat, Chris? <laughs> Christ. It's up to seventy nine. No, it is not. All right, you got Thank it. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Um, so Santa Baby. That so so one radio station, I guess. Just one. So so or a few, I mean, I don't or know. a few, or whatever yeah. it was, right. pulled Santa Baby. From its rotation, right. saying that it was like some type of offensive thing, and maybe it's cold outside. Maybe it's cold outside. Okay. So, so this is the so now, this is what I, the point that I want to make about it is, it sounds ridiculous to pull it, you know this this classic right. Yeah. It kind of sounds ridiculous to pull it, yeah. but what makes what makes this a story is. How ri- how ridiculous it, it is that they pulled it, right? So the reason it goes viral is because media stations, television stations, print, they know that this story is going to stir up a lot of clicks, right. and their all of their advertising yeah. is based off of clicks. Yeah, clicks, oh, I see. Clicks okay, and, right. and people talking about their particular story. Right. Now, there's only one little community where this was affected by the, pulling this song, right. but that news station or in that radio station created a t- tremendous amount of buzz. Yeah, they sure did. For like next to no money. Right, right. And, hmm. and hmm. but the point of it is, is really... And, and the whole idea is outrage, right? Right. But really, no one really ca- the out. No one really cares. Well, well, I don't. I disagree with that. Yeah. That nobody really cares. A lot of people care. I mean, yeah. this Me Too movement is is right. really something think- to pay attention to. But when it gets down to you know a song like this, yeah. that's a little over the top. Okay. I, I I get it, but this is that's over the top. So, well, there's so, something so, in the globe so, today. Well, can I just say that? So my. My daughter had to sing that song at, um, in high school. And so it was the first time I'd heard the lyrics, you know what I mean? And I was just like, and I just thought at the time, you know, wow, well, that's a little, you know, can, what's in this drink kind of thing, you know what I mean? But then I just read about it, and it was, it was written in 1944, and it was written by Frank Lesser. And he wrote it for he and his wife because he was a big songwriter at the time. He wrote Guys and Dolls and all those things. So he wrote that song for his, for he and his wife to sing at parties because every time they would go to a party, um, people would say, oh, can you sit down at the piano and, and play something for us? So they, they, he wrote it. So I think when you think about things in the context yeah. of when they were written and not to try to put... Roofies you know, in it. Right, or, because back then... The, it would just meant a strong drink. Right. You know what I mean? It right. didn't mean like we're drugging somebody. Yeah. You know the, what I mean? So and I, I, I think the lyric that really sets it off is, you know, the one that says, you know, something like, no, no, no. Right. You know, right, 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 right. right. You know, no means no. No means yeah, right. no. Yeah, right. Means no. No, no means no. Right. No. <laughs> no. Uh, so, <laughs> but the thing that, but, but I guess my point is the song has been seemed harmless. For so long, right? Right. No one really was taking, no one's really taking this to be. It's a date rape song. Yeah. Like it, it, no one thinks of it as a date rape song. No well, one, right? No, but I think because they wouldn't put it in that movie if there was connotations of date right, rape. Right, but that, but that was in 1944. So, um, well, so it was in the movie Elf was what brought it back to make it made it a really popular yeah. movie, which was not that, that long ago. And it was some Cleveland radio Fowler. station, I think, that started Cleveland? this. Cleveland. Oh wow. There yeah. You go. But it's just... It's, I don't know. I, it's, it's just... But here, So here's the thing. Like, I think it's a vocal minority that really cares, that that, that, not, that, that, yeah. that wants it pulled off. Right, right. 
You know, right. it's a vocal, it's a minority, it's a tiny amount. Yeah. So it stirs up this whole group of people like, what do you mean you're taking this away? This is, isn't this kind of ridiculous that right. you're taking this away? Right. And, but then the advertisers think that because this, this perpetually outraged group represents the whole, the masses of the United States, right. they get scared to death. And then they, they then that's then what they, alters they, they like what we listen to and what right. we don't get to listen right. to, you know. Right. Well, so I don't know. It's I just don't, kind I of. I don't know. Like, do do a lot of the local stations, you know, Christmas. I've heard it. Play? I've heard it a lot. I haven't I think heard most you know. play. I think yeah. it's probably getting more play than ever. As right. as, yeah. But I, tr- I I I I agree with you. I think it's all about the clicks, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And well, this this radio shame. station trying to become more popular and everything. But when you, if you if you read the lur- the lyrics, right? It's not, you know, it, like that that lyric I said, I, I ought to say, no, 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 sir. And then and then he says, mind if I move in closer. So it's not like, you know, I mean, it's, right. it's consensual. Yeah. It's <laughs> you know, right. it's, right. you know, it's not a... Were you there? Right. And also, yeah, I was there once. And also it's a husband, <laughs> and, it's a husband and wife singing. Right, to, it's a husband and wife right. singing to each other. So. Right, singing to each other. It's yeah. not, so yeah. the research wasn't done on the on you know whoever's yeah. trying to pull the song, but yeah. anyway. We'd like the person who disagrees with us, we'd like them to call in next week. So <laughs> give out your cell number. I'm developing. No, no. Uh, so I got these new. I'm I'm working on these new um these new apps that people will be able to call, call in. in. Oh, that'll be awesome. Yeah, I'm hoping wow. that we can we can make nice. that work. That Are we gonna have a, a a red button five second? Hot, hot yeah, button. yeah, exactly. Delay. Sort of like what we have with Chris. <laughs> Delay. That's an awesome idea. Uh, Ralph, you went down to Nantucket last week for the, something called the Nantucket Christmas Stroll. What's yes. that all about? So the Christmas Stroll, I guess it's been going on for a long time. They, they started this uh, Christmas Stroll years ago because in, in, in the wintertime down in Nantucket, it's right. dead. dead. Everything yeah. shuts down. They roll up the sidewalks and, you know, there's only a few people left on the island, I guess. So they, they introduced this Christmas Stroll. I don't know when they did it, but it's... It, took to like fish to water you know and we went down um last friday so did you, did you take the ferry over we took the my wife and i weren't able to get so the, the thing is is that everybody goes down there so the, the fast high-speed ferries book up we were fortunate enough to hop on a standby fast ferry because we we're on the slow boat to china you know it's two hours and 15 minutes <laughs> and but we were fortunate enough to get the fast ferry we hopped on the fast ferry we got over there by three o'clock, and we walked around, and it's so beautiful. Oh. If you've never been to Nantucket, no, it it's isn't. such a gorgeous, gorgeous island. Yeah. And um, well, you know, you don't need a car from Nantucket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so where did you stay when you went? So we uh, we're doing construction down there. One of the companies is doing construction down there and rented a house. So we've had the we have the house until like May or June or something oh. like that. Oh, you're gonna have it in the spring. Well, the, yeah, they they had it in the spring, but I just didn't take advantage of it. But my business partner said, hey, why don't you go down there and use the house that's available? Because the guys work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 10-hour days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's available. So he said, yeah, you know, we went down there. It was a gorgeous house. Wow. And, um, you know, uh, so we brought a couple friends along, couples. Anyway, we get, Kim and I went down Friday night, and we walked around, and it was, you know, every street, they lined the streets with Christmas trees, and the kids decorate the Christmas trees, and everybody's all dressed up in their Christmas uh, garb, you know, who's dressed oh, up like an elf, fun. who's dressed up like Santa Claus, they got the top hats and the whole bit, and, the, you know, the Christmas scarves and all that stuff, and then Saturday, they have uh, the parade where Santa Claus shows up on a boat, and he walks downtown, Main Street, down, you know, downtown, and when I tell you it is chock full of people, you can walk across the people. That's how many people wow. are down there. Wow. So whoever Where came up with... Where are they all coming from? Like they just they come from all over. I mean, right. we talk to people that are from New Jersey. Oh, yeah. A lot of people come from the Cape. Yeah, the for, the day. The, yeah, for the day, but a lot of people yeah. are, you know, in New England and everything. But they have, it's like the up in uh, Kenny Bunkport, they do the prelude, they have the prelude up there. Yeah. But this was a tremendous, tremendous oh, take. We had a lot of fun. Uh, we had some great dining experiences. Uh, you know, 
a little pricey. You know, everything's pricey, you know. But yeah, it is... It is they got to bring everything on there, yeah. But, you know, coming home was a little tough with the f- slow ferry. We, we couldn't get the fast ferry because everybody wanted to leave Sunday at the same time, noon yeah. time. Yeah. You know, yeah. you got 15,000 people trying to yeah. leave, you know, and trying to cram onto these ferries. But it was a great take. If you've never done it, I highly recommend it. There you go. And there you go. Uh, the... You know, so Ralph also, I'm going to stay with Ralph here. Because Ralph's very upset because we have an announcement to make. Uh, December 29th, we got the green light from Gloucester Stage. We're going to have the Good Morning Gloucester Christmas Party, holiday party, whatever, because it's going to be after Christmas, actually. Um, December 29th, we're going to have a variety show, and there's going to be boo- there's going to be booze, and we're going to tape a podcast, variety show style, style, with a desk, couch, some surprises, a lot of surprises. <laughs> Ralph and Chris are going to be... Uh, are Ralph you going to tell me the surprises ahead of time, please, Joe? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely no, not. come on. <laughs> we, we need at least two or three from you, Pip. We want you to think outside the box. No, I'm not. You, you have to. Tell me what's come going on. on. We have some good things. Yeah, yeah. Kim. I'd be ready, Kim. Talk, talk about being politically correct. So, oh, this is gonna be off the rails. It's gonna be off the rails. So, so we're gonna have we're gonna have a we're gonna have a big party at down uh, the 29th. At, so, it's, at so, do we, so do we have the podcast first and then the party? So, it's, so we're gonna have it like a studio audience style. It's gonna be like basically on the stage, on the yeah. stage, and yeah. everybody can sit down. You, yeah. They can drink and mingle in the lobby. You can't bring drinks in. Yeah, you can bring drinks in. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. I know. like a variety yeah. show. Okay. Totally, yeah. Like the Tonight Show on Star Wars. Cape Ann TV is going to be the tape. Okay. okay. So, so it's important for people to save the date now. September 20th. December 29th. December 29th. We're probably going to tape at 7. We'll probably have people start showing up at 6. Right. And we, have a, we already have locked down. If you, I'm not going to have you guess, but if you could guess who would probably be the most entertaining guest that, from our city, then oh. don't say anything. Okay. We already have some, a couple of guests lined up. Yeah. So all is, awesome. all is invited. More importantly, all invited. We want a full house. A full house. It and is. Then, and then is it, so it's a, like a variety show, and then there's like a like a cast party afterwards. Kind yeah, of. Yeah, you know, people can kind of like, you know, t- 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 we want it to be. Oh, I like loose. that cast okay. party. Yeah. Yeah. And it is eighteen plus. Yeah, you know, you're gonna be 18, 21, you're gonna... 21 and over. Yeah. So, it, that may change. You start off by saying, I'm upset. Why am I upset? So, well, you were upset because Chris, because we had a couple of executive meetings uh, this week that you, you well, because you're a very busy man and you have, uh, you have meetings, but Chris and I... Oh, took, so that means you and I aren't busy? Well, no, Chris and I put together some show notes, but you weren't here to give input. Well, and then you the, read that, yeah. I, I sent the show notes to you for your input, and you said, what is this, the Chris McCarthy show? So this is what they do. They, they send me a text and say, oh, we're having a meeting to discuss the, the, the uh, you know... The, the, the cast. The cast on the 29th. They send me this text at like one thirty in the afternoon and they're saying we're meeting at three o'clock <laughs> you know these two are here no, I was stuffing in New their York face City. stuffing their face with coconut crusted haddock from the causeway <laughs> and i'm in a meeting <laughs> trying to you know earn a living so we got we got to put we got we got we have some ideas for ralph but he was very he was he was very upset that that Chris was getting a lot more of the limelight. <laughs> and, 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 my thoughts, you know, not all of them Oh, they were your oh thoughts. That's a shock. <laughs> okay. It's going to be a lot of fun, though. Okay. I can promise it's going to be very entertaining. There's going to be some surprises. Yeah. So big time. We wear your people. diapers that day, folks. The <laughs> only way this will be successful is if people show up. So the 29th, be there. We're gonna, have, we're gonna make it fun. It's gonna yeah. be fun. And for again, everybody. there's gonna be booze. There's gonna be booze. Chris is gonna be standing at the front door, and for every person that shows up, he's gonna hand him a ten dollar bill. So <laughs> it's gonna be the first monopoly, one thousand monopoly money. That may or may not be the first one thousand. Is she gonna bring her charcuterie? I mean, that would be so beautiful visually. Also, that'd be nice if she did, yeah. and we'd give her some special shout outs, wouldn't we? <laughs> yes, we would. Oh yeah. Next week we're going to give a, a, a lot of shout outs to all the people we want to. We come. should talk to a, we should talk to a lot of the restaurants that we pimp yeah. all the time, and maybe they would, they would actually bring some stuff. What it, could we do something like a, a taste of uh, Cape Ann type thing, where we get That's, some restaurants to set up? No, but just like a smaller version. 
like yeah, three, you know, four, a lot five. of times, a lot of times, the people that we 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 show a lot of love to, they 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 send yeah. plates for us and stuff like that. Yeah, but maybe they would want a representative there. Well, we can talk about that after the show in our I like meeting. That. You know, in our meeting, we could talk <laughs> about, about the bar. T- we we need like a, a bar to sponsor the bar. An official an official bar of the Good Morning Gloucester. Yes. Yeah. Well, the the the, the money from the bar is going to go to the. Um, to, to the Gloucester to the, stage. To the Gloucester stage. stage. They're okay. donating the space. So it's, 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 it's um, not BYOB this time. It's no, going to no. be, you, you be purchase ca- your you cash. Purchase. Cash, yeah. Bar, yeah. cash okay. Instead of people right. bar brain stuff. But don't they said they're going to scare anybody away. Drinks are going to be cheap. <laughs> okay. And, gonna... and, the, and the cost of the drink goes the to the Gloucester and, stage. And in the entertainment, yeah. it's, it's free. Be great. <laughs> it's free. It's, it's worth, free. worth the price of admission. It's going to be funny. Ralph, uh, <laughs> yes, sir. You got so this is a thing, and I didn't realize that this was a thing. But sing, shingles is is a, is for, no shingles is a thing. It's shingles a real, is it's a it's shingles thing. is very, it's a very is nasty. Thing. But yeah. there are vaccines that you can get against it, but they're yeah. very difficult to get, right? Very, very difficult to get. I was on a three a month shortage. waiting list yeah. to get the vaccine. It's a two it's a two part vaccine. You take the first, you know, one when, when you're able to get it. At your doctor, and then two months within two months, I think you have to have the second dose of vaccine. Yeah. So I took my first dose uh, about three weeks ago, and then I have to go back. Uh, yeah. Is that what happened? Begin of, yeah, I know. Is that what happened in your face? No, yeah. I have. I haven't had it. I've, every time I've gone to said to the doctor, "Oh, you know, can I get it?" They're like, and she wants me to get the one called Shingix. That's Shingix, the, yeah. Shingix is the one you ask for because there's a couple that out that are out there <coughs> that aren't as effective as the Shingix one. So that's when you ask. So did you get it? Oh, what happened? No, I haven't gotten it yet. And also, the last two months I'm going to the doctor, I felt so bad. I don't want to do. No, you want to, and your immune want to system's get, already complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I don't want to so do something. So there's an article in the Globe today about um, shingles and the vaccine and how difficult it is, is to, get. to get it. But I'm curious, like, what if we headed up to Canada? Do we get it in Canada? Yeah. Well, Mexico. I'm gonna tell you. So Mexico. Huh. Yeah. I say this: that's when I go to Mexico trip. with the rabbit. Every year? Yeah. The rabbit does not go to the doctors in the United States. He goes and gets his physicals down in Mexico because it's like $12 for, for, to get his physical. He, he gets... He gets <laughs> <laughs> Ralph, I wouldn't even do that. <laughs> he gets his... He gets his... He gets his... He, 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 you can buy over the counter, you can buy Zithromax. He gets like five things of Zithromax. What's Zithromax? It's a... It's like penicillin. Penicillin, yeah. Oh, penicillin. You know, he doesn't see Dr. Jose Jimenez. So hold it. Why does he, why does he stock up on Zithromax? <laughs> why does he stock up on penicillin in Mexico? <laughs> <laughs> no, because if you get, if you get sick, like a, uh, you, uh, uh, that won't help. Zithromax doesn't help with the flu. <laughs> No, you but you know, if like you have an infection. Pneumonia, if you have pneumonia, yeah. it would help with pneumonia. Yeah. So he just stocks up whether he needs it or not. Well, because he goes it's down like there next and he ends up getting like malaria anyway. <laughs> Kate's going to kill you. He's like the, the whole t- Mexican travel industry is going right down the tubes because of Ralph or Georgia. Um, well, or it's going to increase now that be, I know everybody. I can go get a $12 physical. No. He gets his hair cuts down Viagra. there. He goes, we go down there. He goes, he goes get his hair cut. He gets his hair physical. Cut? Yeah, because he gets a haircut, a physical. Physical, <laughs> a little reach around. Uh, pet Manny Petty for eleven ninety five. No, you get the massage on the beach. You get a massage on the beach, an hour long massage for twelve dollars on the beach. Happy ending. Wow. I, oh, I, it's, it's out in the open. You know, I hope not. No, I, I hope they're not you giving guys the are happy. Into that, Ron. How do you read into, into that? Happy you just said a happy ending. No, as the person happy. At You're making the end Kim blush the... now. Stop with your nonsense. <laughs> We just got over the "Baby It's Cold Outside" song, and now you're talking about happy endings. So can what else do we have, Viagra? Joe? He can get you Viagra. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, not that I need it. Except down there, so that's, that's everybody not a has. To, everybody always says, "Can you give me some Viagra?" And they, it's almost like obligatory that <laughs> yeah. they say, "Not that I need it." Yeah. It's, it's not a blue red. pill. Down there, it's red. <laughs> and whatever you do, do not dump it down the toilet, right, Kim? <laughs> Yes. So we'll have a, a major, major influx of uh, did, did you, herring population. Did you know that male testosterone levels in developed countries have gone down like 30%? That does not surprise me at all because they, our society has made us so soft. No, they think it's because it's the levels of the, um, it's because of the levels of the hormones in the drinking water and stuff like that. So. 
Kim, can I ask why you know that? Yeah, where do you read this sort of <laughs> stuff? Yeah, Kim, that, we need you to do some additional research for the... <laughs> The well, they also say that the the, the the girls are getting the boobies earlier because there's big time. Uh, yeah, no, there's true. hormones, right? No, yeah, in the true. milk. Yeah, in the milk. Yeah. So like, that must like, explain mine then. <laughs> you're no, but, like, well, <laughs> I don't even want to explain. If, like, thank God there's not a video because he's like caressing his breasts <laughs> as he says. That must explain uh, mine. He's like, he's like, he's got his hands caressing I'm, his. I, I his, saw it, Joe. Breasts. I saw it. We can't unsee that. Unfortunately, uh, I just, I'm sticking a fork in my eye right now. <laughs> my breasts are getting so big. <laughs> Ever since I moved to Gloucester, it must be the water, the, the water. hormones, it's in the water. Well, you're in a restaurant every 25 minutes. What the hell do you expect? <laughs> Yeah, and you're with me. We're just trying to keep the. Uh, we're just trying to get keep the. Uh, we're just trying to keep the uh, local, pop, economy. local economy going. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay, moving um, on because we have the world's worst longest podcast going right now. <laughs> um, this well, could be Bruce Taz's podcast. <laughs> oh, he can talk. He can talk. Bruce can talk. <laughs> the politicians are great. We had a fifty. We had a. We had a. We what had does a, loquacious <laughs> mean? I know what loquacious, loquacious means. Mean. I, well, yes, we're gonna we're gonna well, be very we're gonna be very respectful. Yes. They, he took a fifth, what should have been a fifteen minute segment, and he put it into a, an hour and nine minutes. That's why we love him. Bruce, sorry, I wasn't here last week, but I yeah, missed it. I would love to. I, I, I really like Bruce. Here. He can tell a story. Yes, he, he's, yes. a, he's you know what the funny thing is, he made it into an hour and nine, but they were all interesting yes, minutes because he is a great storyteller. Yeah, really um, Kim, why don't you give us the winged creature winged update? Winged creature the winged. update. I don't know. Is that what do you say? Winged? How yeah. do you say? It? I say winged. You can winged. say yeah. I think wing winged is better than winged. Yeah, that sounds like you just you winged it. <laughs> you, winged it. <laughs> you winged it across the room. <laughs> well, we have uh, a lot. we have some good snowy owl numbers going on right now. There's some at um, Salisbury Beach, and um, some at Parker River, and some at Cranes Beach. I haven't what, seen any around here yet. What's the difference between Parker River and Cranes? Those are two different, um, distinct, pla- different places. Yeah, yeah. So you. you Cranes is part of the Trustees of Reservation. That's in Ipswich. You just keep going further, and that's a barrier beach, just yeah. just like um, Coffins Beach is a barrier beach. Then we have Cranes Beach is a barrier beach. Then you keep going further north, and then you swing out, and that's Plum Island. And that's also, Plum Island is basically a barrier beach, and the southern, um, I would say at least three-quarters of Plum Island is Parker River National Wildlife oh, okay. Refuge. And at the very, very tip of that is Sandy Point, which is the state wildlife refuge. Yeah. So, um, so um, there's snow, there are a number of snowy owls around. I was filming, um, I was filming one, and I was just real, I was crouched down, and it was just, you know, because there were, there were two, right, in close proximity of it. Proximity of Did each other. Did you have your uh, camouflage on? <laughs> no, no. She had a Canada goose jacket. Yeah, I had my like warm that. jacket on because it was twenty-two degrees out. So how could you go picture take pictures of birds and you killed thirty <laughs> geese that are in your jacket? Well, they're not in danger. Yeah. There's a difference. That's the that's the oh. that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. Right, and um, so <laughs> anyway, stop starting trouble, Chris. <laughs> while <laughs> while one was one was flying away from another one, right? The other one didn't see me. So I was crouched down really low, and one flew, and it landed like eight feet away from me. Wow. And so, and he didn't, I didn't know there was a second one at that time, and he didn't know I was there, and I got this, like, amazing close-up footage of them, and then he flew off. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's really awesome. So, and then they had, like, a little skirmish way, way out in the water, but, um, yeah. That's awesome. Um, so then, um, while I was there filming the um, snowies, there was a flock of snow buntings, and I went back the next day, and the snow buntings were gone, but there was a beautiful flock of red poles in, so we have, you know, they, they're not staying that long, I'm wondering if the snowies are scaring them away. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they eat them, so, yeah, so... Each each flock of these beautiful um, birds, migrate mi- migrating birds, only stay for like a day or so, and mm. then I don't see them again. So you capture them, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, I got some go. amazing photos of the red poles. Speaking of uh, birds eating birds, Joe, don't you have breaking news from one of the lobstermen? Oh, that's right. Mark Ring just told me 
The bald eagle is on ten point ten point now, yeah. right now. Right now, yeah. I wish I could. No, wish that's not the breaking news. I wish I, I wish what happened? He had a piping clover in his mouth. <laughs> no, he did. No. He did. Didn't he say that? No. <laughs> They're all down in Turks and Caicos. No, what are you talking no about? No piping clovers around here. Might have had he something said else. He said piping it. clover. <laughs> They're mm-hmm. down in the Carolinas and there's something rap. else in his mouth. He's such a ball buster. But no. that's what, that's what, <laughs> no, listen, no, listen, no, listen, we would see Hedwig, the snowy owl that was here right last year, that was right yep. near your house. We would see her every night, either like she'd leave the hotel roof and go straight down and get a shrew or a mouse or a yep. rat, or she'd go further out to see and come back with a snow, uh, like a sea duck in her mouth. So, really? yeah. Yeah. A yeah. sea duck? A sea yeah. duck. A little they'd sea duck. they pluck a sea duck right out of they the water. they just pluck them right out. Holy yeah. shit. So. That's why I'd be su- worried yeah, if they were going to pluck your eyes out. I <laughs> wouldn't be surprised. No, that was going to happen. Be careful. I wouldn't be surprised you be if you, if, you know, did you know that snowy owls do eat um, piping plovers? They do? Yeah, because this summer... A lot of the snowy owls remained on the beaches as the piping plovers were arriving, and so um, when they when they cough up their owl pellets and they could and they dissect the owl, owl pellets, they would find adult piping plover heads in the owl pellets. So, so piping oh, plover. Nice. <laughs> That's why I bought Chris a white jacket with the uh, wings on the back of it. He's going to have him lay down on the beach. What, what are pellets? Poop? No. So. Uh, Okay, snowy owls and snowy owls, for example, have two stomachs. And so the, the part that they can digest goes into one, and the part that they can't digest goes into the other stomach. And then that, they cough Crazy. that up. Oh. And so it's really cool. Like, I filmed they Hedwig doing it. It's, and so when it's like a thing like this big. It looks like they're coughing up a whole rat or something when, it ha- when you see it happening. Mm. But then you can look at the, that's how they know what they're eating, what their Do diet they is. Too? Yeah, they poop too. Really? Yeah. So Kim is the the name has been entrusted as the namer of the snowies. So she's the only. Some other people no. try to name the the snowy owls on the back shore and stuff, and she says no, no, no. That is That's the true. unofficial <laughs> name. The official <laughs> name is Hedwig, Hedwig because right. she is the oh, offi- Hedwig, namer of is the. Is Hedwig really a snowy owl? Yes, we really. She have, named it. Yeah, we have, well because. And if anyone that, calls it anything mean, else, no, listen. The, the wrath of Kim comes no, down. No, actually, somebody, she crushes su- somebody, somebody, su- somebody suggested that name to me, so I didn't officially name it. And so we. But had you gave fem- it credence. Right, we had a female, and we called her Hedwig, and we had a male, and we called him Bubo. But then somebody named the one up at, at Salisbury Beach. Dave Fernandes told me the name that they gave the one at Salisbury Did Beach. Did you go up there and, and, and lay um, down the hammer of the, of the gods and tell them that <laughs> no. uh, you're the only one no. that can officially name his the, name, his, guess the what keeper his of the snowies? Guess what his name was. I didn't name this one. It was El Diablo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Right. A little spice. Uh, yeah. So, Chris, there's still a chance for you. To get it, be named after you. We we could have if we have some if we I'd have a resident one. I have a resident one this year. El Bresto. I would if, she, if she's a girl. El Bresto. <laughs> El Man Bresto. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> If we have uh, any listeners left at this point, they just got the wing and they, they fell asleep. They fell asleep. Come back, they listeners. Come back. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> they El fell Mano asleep or they Bristol. were grossed out. <laughs> Man old <laughs> Bubo. Well, you did name one Bubo. 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 He's called. Do you know why? Because Bubo. Bubo. Do you know yeah. why I called him that? Because the yeah. Latin name is Bubo Scandiacus, and so I thought it would get it would be a way for people to learn the Latin name for it. So that's why oh, that's we just nice. called Bubo. That's very nice. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Try to get a little science lesson in there. Yes. And among the poopy the, talk. Amongst all the poopy talk. <laughs> and boop, poopy and booby talk. <laughs> poopy and Poopies booby and boobies. All right, when Kim starts getting out of control. Yeah. <laughs> Kim. Do, you, right. do you know what I used to say to my kids when they wanted to talk bathroom talk? <laughs> what? I would say, if you, if you have to talk bathroom talk, you have to go in the bathroom. <laughs> no, they fell terrible. for that? That's how you got to the new party? To, to do no, the party? no. I would say if you have to talk bathroom, you know, we'd be at the table and you know, kids start with just like you guys do. <laughs> children, <laughs> like, like the children, children, the adult children. And I'd say if you have to talk that way, if you have to talk bathroom talk, then you need to go into the bathroom and we'd stop talking bathroom talk. All right, Kevin, it's time to put the bottle back into your uh, pocketbook. 
<laughs> what are you drinking today? What are you drinking this Sunday? <laughs> she had the nut milk. Eggnog with vodka. Yeah. Right? <laughs> was, was there some bourbon? <laughs> A, She's gone crazy. I think we got a, it's official. We made her crazy. We got, I think it's a. I think it's a, 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 a Santa baby situation with a spiked eggnog. Oh, yeah. We are converting Kim. She's becoming as bad as we are. There you go. All right. So save the date, December 29th, twenty ninth. Wow. Gloucester stage. It's Seven happening. O'clock. Seven o'clock. Come at six. So doors okay. open at six because we're gonna we're gonna mingle. We'll mingle first. We're we'll gonna mingle. Okay. We got to mingle. All right. <laughs> All right, Gloucester Cast 310 is in the books. Thanks for coming, guys. Mm-hmm.